Alright lads, women are welcome too, but there are consistently never any women who watch my videos. It must be my sexy sexy British voice, it just makes them too wet. I'm like Colin Firth, or Hugh Grant in the 90s. What ho good chap, let us partake in a professional buggery. This comic we are looking at is New Warriors 4 from November 1999. And what can I say other than things are heating up with Human Fire and Seagull. Whoa, ho, ho. Their sex is on fire. This is the second volume of New Warriors, which means the second series. It was short-lived, but I liked it. This team ain't your daddy's New Warriors, that's for sure. Well, about half of them are, but... The other half are new additions, like this guy called Agnes. He is an urban street kid from North Ghetto Avenue, who one day found a magic breastplate belonging to the Olympic gods. And now he uses it to crack down on drive-by shootings and impromptu rap battles. But mainly, he is a member of this version of New Warriors. And who is this guy that looks a bit like Blackstar? It's Blackstar with a bad redesign is who he is. The redesign doesn't last more than another issue, whereas Seagirl's all-white ensemble... This will last for a while, and some people really dislike it. We have two main stories at play in this issue. Our first one concerns New Warriors member Torpedo, and her relationship with this arson investigator called Dalton. Unbeknownst to her, he is on the take and is in the pocket of one of our central bad guys for the series. Not Saliva Man, but Saliva Man's son, Darkwing. Darkwing I have talked about before, and I have shown this page as a cutaway when I have done so. He comes from 70s Dairy Devil comics. And he was in some of Marky Mark's Captain America as one of Red Skull Man's So Skellington crew. Darkwing is running part of the mob on behalf of his dad. But he wants to prove himself better than him and get out from under his thumb. He sends these uber generic bad guys after the new warriors these are my least favorite type of bad guys the ones who are people in armor without much in the way of excitement none of them gan on to further success although most of them do make another appearance only to all meet their ends so, here is our action. The new warriors fighting these guys. And the one who shoots fire is focusing on torpedo. So, there is a big hint to who this person really is. Yeah, this action, it is totally fine. There is no wrong with it. It's only the bad guys are... Uninspired and unexciting. I think even the cover knows this because 
the thing that it sells itself on is the human fire and seagull romance. This is their first date, I believe. They agreed to it last issue or the issue before. I like this. It is a good pairing. At the time, Seagull's romance with Blackstar had been benched because he kept getting solo books and nobody wants Seagull on the spotlight of his solo books. Hume on Fire famously gets through a lot of girlfriends and so having him get with Seagull and surprisingly they have quite a long relationship too. It makes sense. I like their relationship. I think it is one of Hume on Fire's strongest ones even. Hume on Fire has had, I would say, three major loves before this. First is Iris West from The Unhumans, which flatlined the minute she married The Flash. Most people just want to go back to that one with a can it. Then was Fire Orc who wound up leaving Earth, ending their relationship altogether. And lastly was Kerry Washington, who he married, but then, well, we know how that turned out, thanks to retcons. Of course there are others, there's Dory Evans, there's Wolfman's bisexual emo son, there's his sister. Human Fire gets around, but his relationship with Seagirl persists for a while. They are together in Jeff Noble's Fantastic Force run, which includes her joining Fantastic Force temporarily when the rest of the team are trapped in the negative zone. The main thing done with their relationship is near the end of that run, when Fire Orc returns, and obviously this puts Seagull in a slightly intimidated and jealous position. His odd girlfriend has come back into his life, but it doesn't split them apart or anything. In typical Marvel fashion, I don't think we ever saw or acknowledged their breakup. Hume on Fire had to, again, become a man or like in the Silver Age. And Seagull was atomized. Then when she came back a few years later, she just got back with Blackstar. I like this relationship though. I think it is good. They are two characters whose personalities work together. And even their power sets nicely contrast each other. Fire and water. It is a good couple and it is sad that Marvel refused to let human fire grow up and have a serious relationship. Even this, which lasted, by my count, at least five years maybe. It was never once spoken of as a long-term relationship or a serious one. They happened to be dating that long because nobody came along and broke them up until someone came along and broke them up. I am sure, actually, that some writers will have had Hume on fire with other girls, even when he was meant to be with Seagirl. Here is Agnes at home. Agnes is the one character on this team who is a new character. He was introduced in this series. The rest are all either past members of the New Warriors or a guy with AIDS from some excellent men comics. Here is a shot of our team Ganon into action. 
And I think that's a nice place to end it on. Oh, one thing I do want to say is that I'm actually quite impressed with the stock quality of this. The paper is very nice, thick, and it doesn't feel like it's going to come out. Overall, it feels quite thick and sturdy. The story is all right. The run is good, and I like the date bit. Who do you ship Hume on fire with? How do you feel about him and Seagull as a couple? I don't know if this is end game romance for him, but I think it is the one I can see him actually working with long term and marrying. I mean, Marvel are never ganning to get back to the time that him and Fetish Fuel were both keen. So he might as well marry Seagull. I really like this run. Let's hope, again, Marvel does a trade paperback of it so more people can experience it for themselves. I'll give it... Seven thumbs up.